this is a Sony PlayStation 3. And this is quite literally a dumpster find. This was a, a discarded machine that I, that I came across. This machine is model CECHL, which came out in 2008. This is part of the FAT series. Now, these machines came out in three varieties, FAT, Slim, and Super Slim. This is the first version, the FAT. I've never owned one of these machines or any game console machine for that matter, but I like gadgets. I like technology. I thought maybe we could have some fun with this. So I took it home and plugged it in and, and, and saw what it could do. And I purchased the controller. And I bought one game here to see if this thing worked. And yes, it does seem to work. We've got the crossbar interface, so we know the thing is basically in working condition. But soon I discovered there were a few problems with it. One problem is the cooling fan starts sp speeding up soon after you turn it on. When it's been on for a few minutes, it gets louder and louder, and then it starts to sound kind of like a vacuum cleaner. So it seems to have a heat problem. The second problem I discovered was that it wouldn't play the Blu-ray game discs. You could put a disc in and you could eject it, but it wouldn't play it. This is a third problem I've encountered with this PS3. Every time I turn off the power, I lose the time and date and have to reset it. So probably I have a bad memory battery inside of this uh, PS3 as well. So that's another thing we'll have to fix. I assume that's why this machine was discarded. So I've done a little bit of research on it and we're going to go through how to fix this thing and solve those problems and turn this into a working machine again. We're going to start by taking it apart. Now we start at this end of the machine where you will find a little stick on label. Basically this label is a warranty label. If you peel this label off, it'll void your warranty. Well, since it's a nine year old machine, I kind of don't think that's going to be relevant anymore. If you peel this label back, you come across a little rubber stopper, a little rubber plug. which peels off easily enough. And here it comes out right there, okay? Always a good idea when you're working on stuff like this to have some sort of a container to hold the parts as you're pulling them off. I like to use these old, these old pill jars. Yeah, drop it in there. Okay, now underneath that rubber plug, there is a screw. That is a six-pointed security torque screw. And so in order to open that, we need a T10, that's the size, a T10 security torque screwdriver. And out it comes. With that security screw removed, this lid can now be slid off. Slide it to the left, and off it comes. There are seven screws holding this top on. And they're located one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All of these screws are the same length except for one. This one up here is a little shorter than the others. Now, 
there are little arrows marking where those screws go in. There's a little arrow. You can see it right there. It's pointing right to where the screw is. So when you're putting it back together again, just look for those arrows. Now there's an arrow here. Now this arrow has a little S next to it to remind you that that's the short screw. Okay. So we'll now remove those seven screws. And there we have six identical ones and then one short one. Now there's a little slot back here, right here, and there's a little metal, there's a little plastic tab in here that you have to depress, and that will release the lid from the rest of the box. Now with that tab released, you then pull it towards you like so. And then you can release all the little hooks on this side and off it comes. With the lid off, we reveal the power supply and the Blu-ray player. Now the power supply has to come off first because it partially covers up one of the cables to the Blu-ray player. The power supply is held on by two screws here and here. These are coarse screws. And then it's held on by one screw in the front and two screws in the back. These are fine thread screws. Now just like with a the lid, these screws have little little arrows pointing at them. Now for the fine threaded screws, it'll be an arrow plus the letter M. We'll go ahead and remove these screws now. Now with these screws, you see kind of a stair step. One is taller than the other, and this screw is longer than this screw. We end up with two coarse threaded screws, two fine threaded screws long, and one fine threaded screw short. In the back we have one power connector with two big lines coming out of it. And there's a little tab here you need to depress and then pull back. And in the front we have this cable to the main board. You can connect you can disconnect it at either end. Now everything basically is disconnected. Now right about here Underneath, there's two big prongs connecting the power supply to the main board. Now at this point, there's nothing actually holding on the lid of the power supply. It'll just pop right off. What you must do is get your fingers kind of underneath this thing, because that plug does have some... There we go. And there it is. That plug plugged into that socket right there. Now the power supply comes out. Now we have the optical drive. It's connected with two connectors, one in the front, one in the back. The Optical drive itself really isn't held down with anything at this point. This connector can simply be removed like so now. 
This connector is a little more delicate. Now this other connector is a flat cable. It comes in two varieties. Some have the 24 pin connector and some have a 60 pin connector. This is the 24 pin version. Now this little black piece here is held on with a hinge. You have to get your fingernail under this end and just gently lift it back. Flip it up like that. It's really delicate. Be very careful with that. And you slide the cable this way. It's held in with little grooves. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to lift up this entire Blu-ray player. This isn't really held in with anything at this point, and I'm just going to slide it backwards. And remove that cable from this very delicate connector. You really don't want to damage that. You damage that, you're pretty much finished. Okay, the Blu-ray player is now out. Now, if you're going to be working on the Blu-ray player, if this thing is your problem, then you've, you've taken this thing apart as far as you need to. Okay, you now have the Blu-ray player in your hand. Now, if you're going to deal with the overheating problem, you've got more work to do. We'll go ahead now. We'll, we will proceed further in the disassembly. Now, with the power supply and the Blu-ray removed, we will now disassemble it further. We're going to go back to this end. You see there's a little lid here. You can get some light reflecting off so you can see it better. This little lid covers the disk drive. Right along here, there's a little bit of an indentation right here. Get a small screwdriver in there. You can pop this guy off. And it reveals a little screw right here. Like a size zero Phillips head. We'll unscrew that. Pull that little tab and out comes our disk drive. Now the disk drive itself is held in this kind of a cage. And it's held on by these two screws here. Two small fine threaded Phillips head screws. Just lift that right out. There we go. And remove that. Now, this is where the AC power switch comes into the power supply. It also has a ground lug. This is probably about the biggest screw in the whole thing. Now we have this connector goes to the fan. We'll disconnect that. And this little connector here goes to our RF antenna. Very delicate little connector there. Go ahead and disconnect that very carefully. You don't want to bend anything or break anything. Okay. Now we are going to disassemble the lower half of the machine. Uh, this board and plate combination is held on by a whole perimeter of screws here. Um, it's a mix of, of coarse and fine thread screws. The coarse screws have the larger rounder head and the fine screws have a flatter and smaller head. Now again, they are, there are arrows pointing to the screws and the ones that are fine thread will have an arrow plus an M. I'm going to go ahead and remove the fine thread screws first.
Now, this one also holds on the uh, Wi-Fi antenna. Okay, and with that, we can now remove the Wi-Fi antenna. We'll put that someplace safe so we don't lose it. Go back to the front again. And now we will just start removing all these coarse screws. I don't think there's any particular order they need to come out in. Got a whole row of four of them here. That was uh, six coarse screws and three fine screws. Now we have these four big screws that hold on these metal plate spring devices, which apply pressure to the uh, heat sinks. So we can now remove this plate. And let's see if this will come up. I guess it's going to be it's going to be stuck down with the old heat sink, I guess. Okay, now I, I struggled with this for a while and finally came free. Now this board slides out. The problem was, of course, these chips were stuck to the old dried out uh, heat sink compound. After sort of working in a, a little while, it finally let go. Hopefully I didn't damage anything. Mm-hmm. And here's our battery, huh? There's our battery problem, and there are our those are our chips, which are probably running too hot. This board is removed. Now this big old metal plate can also be removed. Now we're really down to the bare essence here. Basically, all we have left is the power switch, the fan, and the heat sinks. And we got two screws here and here, which appear to hold this entire assembly in. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And we have two more screws in the front. We'll go ahead and remove those here and here. And I probably don't need to remove any more at this point. However, this is almost certainly the first time this machine's ever been opened. It's got a lot of dirt and stuff in there. I'm just going to go ahead and pull the whole thing apart just so I can give it a nice thorough cleaning. I can remove that. That piece on the back now slides off. I can slide out this entire fan piece. Boy, that's a big fan. And quite a lot of dirt in here. Now we can get a, a nice close look at these those heat those heat sinks. Now we have we have now essentially completely disassembled this thing. I'm going to use this as an opportunity just to clean all the dirt out that I can. Okay, now we have the. Uh, the main board out and we can take a nice look around. And our heat sink compound seems pretty dried out. I'll have to remove all of that. And here's our uh, memory battery. And 
and uh, I suspect that's no good. I shall go ahead and remove that old battery and okay we'll check some voltages here. Here's our old battery measuring zero. Our new battery just to compare there we are. Fully charged. So that's why that's why our uh, PlayStation is losing the time every time we turn it off. It seems a, a ridiculous amount of work to have to replace a memory battery. I mean, obviously this thing is eventually going to go bad. So you literally have to tear the entire machine down, including break breaking the uh, the heat sink compound in order to get to this. Well, so we're going to go ahead and pop this guy in. Okay. By the way, it's a CR2032 battery, the kind you see on most PC motherboards. I'm going to wipe all of this old heat sink compound off of the, uh, the chip and the uh, heat sink. I don't think it's very important exactly what you use to wipe this old stuff off. I'm just going to use a damp rag. Okay, I've gone ahead and wiped those with just... Just, you know, cheap, just cheap tissue paper, damp rag, whatever. Just get that old stuff off. We've got a little bit of residual material. Okay, well, maybe try a little alcohol. A little solvent here. Maybe we can get off some of whatever this is. I think whatever that is. I think that's actually, that's actually cut into the metal. It looks like... Uh, Looks like the edge of the chip actually sort of cut a little groove there. I don't think that's that's not residual material. That's actual damage to the metal. It's about as clean as I can get them. Like I say, this isn't going away. This is that's actual damage to the metal. Those little, those little grooves that have been cut in there, probably by the edges of these chips here. I'll go ahead and just remove this from the chip side. Okay, I've just gone ahead and wiped that old heat sink off of there. There's our video chip, the RSX. And there's our CPU. Now, one thing to observe about this board, you see all this material here, all this whitish crap. This board was uh, obviously exposed to water. I mean, I don't know how long it was sitting out there before I found it. I'm pretty sure it got rained on at least once. It's kind of a miracle it still works. And you can see here where the oxidation is particularly bad. It's formed a real greenish patina on that copper surface. A little bit more of it here. I'm going to use a little bit of this polishing compound. It's really for your, your the paint on your car, but it's a it's a very fine abrasive. You know, it shouldn't really do any damage. I'm going to see if I can't perhaps remove some of this. I want to expose the bare metal again. It might be important for grounding purposes. Uh, <clears throat> I've used the polishing compound, uh, I've taken off some of that oxidation. Still pretty bad, but you know, hopefully that should give us good contact. Now we will reassemble it. Okay, now reassembling is basically reverse order. Each thing's going first. There we go. Lay the fan on top of that. Just a whole bunch of pegs and slots and things that all have to line up here. And we put our little back cover on again. And that back cover is held on with screws here and here.
Now we've replaced the two screws that hold it in the back. We will replace the two screws that hold it in the front. The screws are all identical, coarse threaded screws. Next we apply this uh, bottom metal shield, the shield that goes underneath the main board. Now at this point I will apply the heat sink compound. Now um, in several videos I've seen they urge you to use the good stuff, the expensive stuff, you know. Uh, well, I don't have the expensive stuff. I just I have this old tube of uh, silicon thermal grease that I've used for years. In fact, it's so old that actually the, uh, the plunger has literally broken. The, the plastic is crumbling. Um, this thing is quite old. But I've used this stuff for years and years with very good results. Different people advocate different ways of applying this stuff. Some people basically say, kind of put it all over and then use a spreader of some sort, like a, like a credit card to spread a thin sheet. Other people advocate putting a blob right in the middle and then allowing the pressure of the heat sink to sort of spread the stuff out evenly. Um, I don't know. I don't know which is better. I'm going to use the latter technique. Now I'm going to place the main board on top of the bottom shield. It has to kind of slide in this slot right in the back and that should fall into place. And then we apply the top metal shield. And then the springs, which apply a downward force, now I'm going to screw these in. I'm going to go back and forth because I want to sort of apply the force evenly. We will now screw down the system board and top plate combination. We will start with the grounding lug we will then reconnect this cable this is the fan cable we now have six coarse screws to put back in. One, two, three, four, five, six. Next, we will replace the RF antenna. And we will reconnect its connector. It's a very delicate connector, so we want to take care that we don't damage it. Now we have two fine thread screws in the back one of which holds down the Wi-Fi antenna. And 
and we have the one fine thread screw on the front of the board. Next, we put our shield for the disk drive. The shield is held with two fine thread screws. Now we can insert the disk drive. Seat the connector properly and pull in this and then push in this tab. That tab is held down with a fine thread screw. In this case, it has blue paint on it. With the bottom half put back together, we can now do the upper half. We, st we will now put back on the power supply and the optical drive. We have to put on the optical drive first because this cable is partially covered up by the power supply. When we put the optical disk drive in, the connector for the flat cable needs to be up. And we take this flat cable and we slide it in through the grooves. There are little grooves on this connector. And just slide it in. And you want that black line to line up. That means the cable is fully seated, and then we can snap the connector closed. And then we have the front connector here, which connects us to the main board. And we go ahead and connect this cable. And now we can put on the power supply. Now we have these two prongs here that have to match up with that socket there. Now with the prongs lined up, we push it down and seat the power supply. The front connector can now be connected to the main board. And on the back, This large connector with the two big cables that go to the power supply switch. That will be connected when it snaps into place. And now we can add the screws to the power supply. And remember with the power supply, there are two coarse thread screws that go here and here, and there's three fine thread screws, two long and one short, long one here, long and a short one back there. Okay, we'll go ahead and put those on. Okay, good. So we, we have our cover for our disk drive. We put the tab in. We put the tab in here and then just pop it into place. Next we put the top back on. We hook the we we hook these little Got these little got these little hook things along the bottom. Hook them in that way and then and then close the lid backwards. And again there's that little tab that latches into place. Seven screws, six long, one short. And the short one ends up back there.
We'll put those in now. And we slide our cover on top, a little bit to the left, and then pull it to the right. Now the lid is secured in place with this T10 security torque screw. However, um, I don't really see the point in using a security bit at this point in this nine-year-old machine. I mean, it's, it's not in warranty or anything. So I'm just going to replace the security torque screw with just a regular Phillips head screw of the same thread size. That way, when I open it up again, I don't have to go running around looking for, you know, security uh, torque screwdrivers. It is a little it is a little tough getting that screw in. It's kind of in deep. You might have to stand the machine up vertically to, to get the screw to get started. And then the last piece is that little rubber stopper thing. Which again I don't even know that you really need in, in this machine at this point, but what the heck. Make it complete. That's it. Complete teardown and reconstruction. Now, how did we do? Well, after replacing the uh, memory battery, the uh, internal clock now works and it's retaining the time and date. And after replacing the heat sink compound, the overheat problem has been fixed and the fan is now running at normal speed. Um, unfortunately, we of course still have our, our Blu-ray read problem and that's a much bigger thing to deal with and that's going to have to be on a separate video. But at least we got two of the problems fixed. And that's it.